There is another letter on the Stanford rape case that is going viral right now, and this time it is from a dad, and it is to Brock Turner's dad. John Pavlovitz is a pastor from Raleigh, North Carolina, and he posted the letter on his blog. And I want you to listen for a moment to some of the things that he has said in this case. I need you to understand something. And I say this as a father who dearly loves my son as much as you must love yours. Brock is not the victim here. His victim is the victim. She is the wounded one. He is the damager. If his life has been deeply altered, it's because he has horribly altered another human being, because he made a reprehensible choice to take advantage of someone for his own pleasure. Pastor John Pavlovitz joins me live now from North Carolina. Thank you, Pastor, for, for being with us right now. Um, I, I wanted to ask you what what prompted you to, to write this letter and if you expected to, to get the platform that you're now getting. Well, Ashley, um, I've been a local church pastor for the past 19 years, and I've seen the way we silence people when crimes like this are committed, the way we ascribe blame to victims, and the way we remove culpability from assailants. And as a father, as a husband, as a pastor, and really as a member of humanity, I just didn't feel like I could be silent in the face of this. I wanted to uh, speak into it and allow conversation to, to happen that was productive. Your words have uh, really resonated. They resonated with me, and they are certainly resonating with a lot of readers online right now. The, the father in, in, in Brock's case, Dan Turner, you can understand as a father yourself, I can't imagine being in that, that terrible position. Uh, but, but juxtapose that with your, with your writings about being that person at that moment, and read for me what you said about that. I wrote, I understand you trying to humanize your son in your letter talking to the judge about his favorite snacks and swim practice and about the memories that are sweet for you as his father. But to be honest, I don't give a damn, and if his victim was your daughter, I'm quite sure you wouldn't either. I imagine this young woman had favorite snacks and sports too, and parents who had wonderful plans for her that didn't include this nightmare. There is no scenario where your son should be the sympathetic figure here. He is the assailant. He is the rapist. I can't imagine as a father how gut-wrenching a reality that is for you, but it is true. So, Pastor, um, do you suspect that the demographics that have universally been reached by this story, by her letter, by your letter, by the facts of the case, the details, by the sentence, do you suspect we may be at a cultural turning point where parents everywhere have the critical conversations with their sons and their daughters about what it means to give consent and that you cannot get consent if the other party has been drinking too much? Yes, and I think for me, people ask me, you know, what can we do on college campuses to change this? And for me, it's a, it's a heart issue. It's helping, you know, challenging young men to see the inherent dignity of women and to really um, act and ask them to be accountable for their actions and to make other men accountable. It's really about seeing the inherent value of other people. Um, and so for me, that's where I need this to happen. I want men to be looking in the mirror and looking at other men and, and asking them to do better. Pastor, um, one, one last quick question. If you had a sure. chance to counsel Brock, what would you say to him? I'd say that this isn't the sum total of your life but this is a part of your life and you need to make something happen with this, with the, with the platform you have now. You have to show other men where you went wrong and you have to show them that women matter and that the victims of sexual assault need to be the ones who receive the encouragement and the support and they need the wholeness. Pastor Pavlitz, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for writing your letter and thank you for your thoughts. Thank you, Ashley. This story, um, by the way, has also made it all the way to the White House. Press Secretary Josh Ernst was asked specifically about this case yesterday, and this is what he had to say. The president believes strongly that sexual assault is wrong, that there's no place for it in our military, there's no place for it on college campuses, there's no place for it in our society. Uh, and the president and the vice president have played a leading role in the It's On Us campaign to not just speak out against the scourge of sexual assault, 
but also to encourage men and women across the country to shirk from their responsibility to intervene when the risk of sexual assault is heightened. That it's on us as Americans, as active members of our community, to protect one another and to look out for one another and where necessary to intervene to stop a sexual assault. It's very fitting because that is uh, what two Stanford grad students did. Two